Hello, this is Jim Schnabel uh, giving a 30-second talk in the series from the 7th edition of Principles of Biochemistry by Leninger. Uh, today we're going to discuss uh, genes, information pathways, and some overview of uh, DNA structure uh, in the organism. So first we'll discuss uh, information pathways. These consist of genes and chromosomes. A gene transcribes and translates one polypeptide, and a gene encodes all of the primary sample for a final product. So we look at uh, DNA, which is a double strand. There is a strand of DNA, 5' prime to 3', prime, and the complement, the complementary strand is in reverse, 5' prime to 3', prime. 5' prime is the and it has the phosphate attached, and this is the deoxy form. So we have uh, thymine, thy, uh, th uh, thymine, and uh, uh, and not uracil. The the complementary strand to the, the 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 to DNA is here, and the transcribed uh, product is the messenger RNA. So the the complementary base pairs are G to C, C to G, A to U, C to G, T to A, and so on and so forth. And the, this is the strand, the transcribed strand, strand is messenger RNA, and we consider from 5 prime to 3 prime, as this is 3 prime, so we're beginning with 5 prime, and we have uh, the polypeptide, so this is transcription, and the uh, transformation from M messenger RNA template to a polypeptide strand is called translation. And the, this is a 5 prime, the amino terminus, which uh, begins the process is at this end. And these uh, three uh, uh, nucleotides uh, in sequence are coding for a specific amino acid. So CGU codes for arginine, GGA, glycine, UAC, uh, tyrosine, and so on, all the way down to the carboxyl terminus. Uh, DNA content, the virus is, uh, we don't refer to living viruses, the correct term is viability or, or not viable. Uh, these are uh, uh, chemicals in a box, uh, the way to describe it. They are infectious uh, parasites. Uh, not in the, uh, the, 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 the term that we usually use for parasites, but their, uh, their ability to, uh, uh, to uh, recreate their structure is based on the, the ability to infect, and they do require a host. So by that uh, impact, they are parasites, but they're obviously not part of that kingdom. You can have a single RNA or a DNA strand surrounded by a protein coat, the DNA virus is usually circular, and it can be double-stranded. For bacteria, you have double-stranded DNA with extrachromosomal DNA free in the cytosol, and we call these plasmids. Plasmids can confer antibi antibiotic resistance, and usually it's one chromosome, very small uh, components of extrachromosomal DNA. Eukaryotes have a very long double-stranded DNA with a somatic number. Uh, DNA is also present in mitochondria and chloroplasts, which are circular duplexes. These are complex, uh, this is a complex eukaryotic structure. They're non-coded domains, which are called introns, and separate sequences, which are coded, and these are exons. Only 1.5% of human DNA is coded, about 30% of DNA or introns, and the remaining DNA has no defined role. About 3% of these are simple sequence repeats. These are short sequences repeated millions of times in the chromosome. They form centromeres and telomeres. Centromeres are the DNA sequence which anchors the protein to the chromosome at the mitotic spindle. And telomeres are sequences at the end of the chromosome, which stabilize the structure. So, with this uh, with this strand of DNA that we see, the sequence we have telomeres at either end, centromere in the center, and there are unique sequences in between, which are the genes, their dispersed repeats, and multiple replication origins. 
there's DNA supercoiling. This is where the DNA strands uh, coils upon itself. This is an intrinsic feature of DNA tertiary structure. The DNA structure has to relax or spread out in order to facilitate transcription. Small strands of DNA in viruses and in plasma are uncoiled. Some of this DNA is underwound, which is caused by DNA structural strain elsewhere, and the proteins can sustain an underwound site. The linking number is the number of twists in a DNA strand. This is usually expressed as the difference between the structural forms. A negative number connotes relaxation. A positive number connotes co coiling. Toposomerases are enzymes which increase or decrease DNA winding, a family of enzymes that which cleave and re-ligate DNA to increase or decrease coiling. So if you have DNA supercoiling, you get compaction of the DNA. This is readily seen microscopically and uh, is a uh, uh, very uh, uh, noticeable black uh, uh, dots, and this is where you can see the DNA coiling on itself. Chromosome structure, chromatin is DNA and associated protein and a small amount of RNA. Histones are proteins which are associated with DNA. Nucleosomes are units of histones and DNA, and they appear as beads with connected DNA sequences and supercoiling wraps. So this is what it would look like under the microscope where you have the uh, DNA strand coiling around a histone octamer with amino terminal tails, uh, which are comprised of protein in between. And DNA compaction exists around a nucleosome core. There are other proteins which maintain DNA structure and structural maintenance of chromosomes. We call these SMC proteins. And bacteria also possess properties of coiling and condensation. Uh, DNA replication, repair, and recombination. DNA replication is where the complementary DNA strand utilizes a template. So uh, we saw the two strands of DNA in the beginning. You could uh, create copies of this, uh, and the template would be the original strand of DNA that you are replicating. So we are producing more identical DNA through that process. The rules of replication are as follows. It's a semi-conservative uh, uh, replication, which is predicated or predicted, predicted uh, from the knowledge from the beta helix double-stranded DNA. Replication begins at an origin, and it proceeds bi-directionally. And in conservative replication, one daughter complex is de novo. So this is what it would look like uh, where you see the, uh, the, the parental duplex here. You get separation of strands at this point, and you get uh, opposing synthesis. These are replication forks. You can see this uh, under the uh, uh, in electron microscopy under these circumstances here. And the, as the, the strand begins to expose more and more, you get uh, a greater amount of this. Finally, you have, a, uh, uh, you have the two strand, the original parental strand is here, where it separates out, and you get a completion of this ring, and then you have daughter duplexes present at this point, visible again under the uh, electron microscopy. And that's what replication would look like. When you have DNA synthesis, this proceeds in a five prime to three pr prime direction, where the five again is the phosphorylated and the three prime is hydroxylated. So the strands go in the five prime to three. So this is the leading strand, which goes five prime to three. And the direction of the movement of replication fork uh, uh, follows the division of the parental strands. These are parental strands, five prime to three prime. So the, uh, and then the lagging strand is here. And that, uh, so that the five prime begins here. And as uh, this, uh, as this opens up, you get uh, 
smaller segments of the five prime here, and then it opens up a little bit more, and you get another strand here. These are called Okazaki uh, fragments. These are discontinuous fragments, and these are eventually ligated together, and you get a direct copy of the uh, this original three prime, the five prime strand. Nucleases are enzymes which, which degrade DNA. They have specific uh, sites. Exonucleases act at determinus and remove sequentially. And the nucleases will act at internal parts of the uh, strand and act at specific sequences. DNA polymerase adds the nucleic acid to the growing chain via the reaction of the DNA strand, a deoxynucleotide with a phosphate, and then you uh, add one nucleotide to the strand, pyrophosphate is released from this. Uh, base stacking and base pairing make the reaction energy efficient. Uh, recall that uh, the, uh, the DNA exists in a double helical form with uh, good separation of the hydrophobic center from the hydrophilic external uh, uh, coil. Polymerase requires a template. This is a base pair to which the uh, complementary base is extended. The polymerase also requires a primer or a pre-existing strand, uh, as we had seen previously with the Okazaki fragments. This, is ha this process has extreme fidelity. It's near nearly error-free. The polymerase has a connective exonuclease component, so errors are removed. And this is a proofreading function. E. coli, as an example, has five DNA polymerases with different functions. The DNA polymerase is part of the DNA replicase system. This encompasses about 20 enzymes and partners. They include helicases, which unwind the strands, uh, topoisomerases, which relieve stress in helical structures, DNA binding proteins, which cause short-lived DNA strands, primers, which create short-lived RNA strands, and DNA ligases, which seal the DNA after RNA is removed. DNA gyrase supercoils strands after polymerization. Polymerization is completed. So this is another example here where we get, you get a, a synthesis of Okazaki fragments. So again, you uh, begin with the five prime and three prime DNA. There's a topoisomerase two DNA gyrase, and replication fork movement is in this direction. So there's a DNA B or DNA beta, uh, beta helicase right here. Uh, you have uh, uh, polymerase uh, three, uh, uh, which is present at these points here. Uh, there are uh, SSB uh, proteins here. The RNA primer is right there, and you get Okazaki uh, fragment right here. So this is an Okazaki fragment. The leading strand, which is is continuous, is in this direction, five prime and three prime. So the Okazaki fragment is at this point. There's a uh, later on in the process, you get a lagging strand. There's an RNA primer, and you get these uh, uh, the Okazaki fragments here, and the Okazaki fragment there with the leading RNA uh, uh, strand here. And as you progress through that, you get more Okazaki fragments, and then these are bound and cleaved together in this step right here. In eukaryotes, a, a, a sequence that uh, acts as an initiation or initiator of replication or AT sequences. So if you have AT sequences in uh, as a series, in other words, a, a, a bunch of AT sequences in a row, uh, this is a signal that this is a replication site that uh, begins at this point. You can also have reg uh, regulation via cyclin-dependent kinases. You have loading of replication helicase, pre-replicative complexes, and origin recognition complexes occurring. For DNA repair, this is extremely efficient. There are numerous mutations that occur daily, and multiple repair systems and enzymes exist 
this is a very energy inefficient uh, step in E. coli. There's mismatch repair where the new strand is is, uh, in met is methylated and all adenines and check for fidelity. Then the methyl groups are removed. A strand of DNA is removed if there's an error in replication occurring, and this is also extremely energy inefficient. There's base excision repair where the nucleotide base is removed. This is usually uh, a case where uracil is uh, placed in DNA by mistake, and this is synthesized by DNA glycosylase. DNA, or rather nucleotide excision repair, is where a segment of DNA is removed. This is done with helicase, and DNA ligase seals the repair site. For direct repair, there's no base removed. Instead, you have direct chemical repair of nucleic acid. For example, UV-induced repair of pyrimidine dimers, where the two thymine dimers, two thymines will actually covalently link with each other, and you can get alkylation damage from this. DNA mutations can occur if there are errors within a replication fork, and these mutations can propagate uh, under these uh, circumstances. Uh, we talked about DNA recombination. This is a recombination of genetic information within and among DNA molecules. There are three types. There's homologous and non-homologous uh, recombination, site-specific recombination, and transposons. For homologous genetic recombination, this is genetic exchange involving extended identical sequences. Non-homologous end joining is where you have double break repairs. The, end is, the ends are ligated together. This is a mutagenic process. Homologous recombination is a form of re This is a schematic of uh, recombinate, uh, recombinant DNA repair at a collapse recognition fork. So this uh, is an example of a, uh, a replication five prime to three prime uh, here with a DNA nick. This causes collapse of replication fork. Uh, you can get this replication extending out to this point, and then it stops, and you have a double-stranded break that occurs. So you have the uh, original, uh, uh, the original strand which progresses to this point, and this strand is, uh, is separate from that. So you have breakage, and uh, as a consequence, you have to re-anneal these. So there is a double-stranded break, and you do additional 5' prime end processing, and then strand invasion where these cross together like this. And you have branch migration. You can see where this where these uh, where this uh, uh, strand is going. You have branch migration, and then you have uh, what's called a holiday intermediate resolution and ligation here. In this particular uh, phase, right in the middle here, you get this sort of branch migration that's occurring. The most critical thing to note is to look at the original break in here and see the complexity involved in uh, repairing and doing recombination of this, uh, of this uh, strand, eventually ending up with this uh, product. And this is where the recombination uh, occurs in this, uh, this uh, formulation. This has three effects. One, it repairs DNA damage. It also functions to link chromatids in the first meiotic cell division, and it facilitates genetic diversity. In meiosis, you have recombination occurring between chromatids. So when we look at this, we have a diploid germline cell represented here. There's a centromere and sister chromatids attached to that. And in prophase one, you have uh, tetrads forming. You have separation of uh, homologous pairs in the first meio meiotic division. 
with the uh, daughter cells present here. And then you get a second meiotic division occurring here, and you get four haploid gametes from this. So they just separate in these haploid forms here with recombination occurring uh, further up this uh, line here. There's also the site-specific recombination. Recombination is linked to a specific sequence. This is a method to obtain complete chromosomal replication. The active site on the recombinase has tyrosine or serine residue, which affects an inversion or a deletion or an insertion. So this is an inversion form. This is the deletion and insertion, and you get you get in this uh, uh, component a situation where the uh, DNA uh, sequence is occurring along a 5 prime, 3 prime, and then other cases where you get an inversion where you have opposing ordering of nucleotides. So as a consequence, you can see uh, how you would need to have a repair mechanism that would reverse this order, and this is uh, uh, how uh, you can look at it from a planar perspective, and in this case, where they're in parallel, you would have these go uh, in an anti-parallel arrangement and then gain the conversion with the cleavage, which deletes the, uh, the area in question and has it uh, basically act as an independent uh, uh, moiety here. In transposons, the uh, segments of DNA jump from site to site. This is a rare process and tightly regulated. So for transposons, we have uh, terminal repeats. The transposon here, the transposase makes staggered cuts in the target site, and the transposon is inserted at the site of the cuts, and then you fill in the gaps with replication. So you can get... Uh, DNA uh, position and placed into a target using this and filling in the gaps here. This is how you can introduce genetic material. Uh, immunoglobulin genes are a model for uh, recombination. There are millions of combinations. The, uh, the gene has variable and constant domains, and this is a transposon model. So here are the variable, the variable segments, the constant segments, and the germline. And these are processed through as you progress through the maturation, where you go through the DNA of the uh, uh, B lymphocyte, primary transcript, processed messenger RNA, light chain polypeptide, cleaving to the, uh, to the heavy chain. And you get uh, the antibody molecule with the variable uh, components and the, uh, the, uh, the constant uh, components of the heavy chain here. And that will do it. Thank you very much.